Three-toed box turtles and Russian tortoises both make amazing pets in their own right. But which one of these two species makes the better pet? In this video, I'm gonna try to answer that question for you. My name is Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing amazing. Today I am here with two awesome species of turtles and that is my three-toed box turtle Franklin and my Russian tortoise Kale. Yes, I know, sound the alarms. I did just call Kale a turtle and that is because tortoises can be turtles, turtles cannot be tortoises. So Kale technically, even though Kale is a tortoise, he's still a turtle as well. No! No! So I know there's a lot of different species of box turtles out there, but for the sake of this video, I am going to specifically be talking about three-toed box turtles because that's what Franklin is. And I also know there's a lot of smaller tortoises out there, but we are talking about Russian tortoises. So this is really a three-toed box turtle versus Russian tortoise video. I just wanted to put that out there so there was no confusion. So as I said before, these are just two amazing species of turtles to own, and this video is all about which one of these two makes the better pet. So let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today are the looks and kind of like the wow factor of both of these animals. Three-toed box turtles looks wise, their shell is pretty plain compared to some of the other box turtle species that you'll see out there. They really don't have much of a patterning on their shells like some other box turtles may have. Three-toed box turtles and box turtles in general tend to be pretty colorful. They have these markings on their face, just like these splotches of red and yellow and white. Some might have more red than others, some might have more orange colorations than others. It really varies quite a bit within the species, but Franklin himself, not the most colorful and bright box turtle in the world, but still beautiful, still a beautiful animal altogether. Three-toed box turtles also have these beautifully colored eyes. Some are like a bright, bright red, some might be a yellowish color, some might be an orange color, but these turtles are really, really beautiful coloration wise. And I know I keep saying beautiful a lot, but that's because it's the truth. These are really just wonderful looking animals and just really, really cute. Just look at their little face. <laughs> Russian tortoises tend to stay on the more plain side of things. These are tortoises that live in the desert and so they don't really have a need for bright, bright colorations. As you can see, they just really have just that tan color. Their shell doesn't really have anything too special about it as far as color wise. Did you just pee on me? You did, don't worry, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna put you down in a second. Really just a, a pretty plain looking tortoise. What you would expect from a tortoise. Because of the patterning and the coloration of the box turtle, I'm going to give the three-toed box turtle the advantage in this category. Beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder in this, in this situation, but in my opinion, I just think that the box turtle's beauty kind of outshines the Russian tortoise a little bit, so that's why I'm going to give it the point for this round. The next thing I wanted to talk about is their size and their enclosure size. Now, as you can tell, these are two adults right here that I have in my hands, and as you can tell, pretty much the same size. I mean, the Russian tortoise will tend to get a tiny, tiny bit bigger on average. So for the most part, this is what you should expect. Not very big, which is actually a pretty good thing, especially when you wanna house these guys indoors. As far as enclosure size, they do need a somewhat big enclosure for their size. I house both Franklin and Kale in 55 gallon Rubbermaid stock tanks, and that works amazingly for them both, and pretty much both of their setups are, look pretty similar, except one's just a little bit drier than the other, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Really, both of them have the same size requirements. Both of these animals as adults get to be about the same size, and for that reasoning, this category is going to end in a tie. I almost forgot to mention that both the three-toed box turtle and the Russian tortoise would do great outdoors, and they would actually prefer to be outdoors getting that natural sunlight 
but that all depends on if you have the means to do it, if you have a backyard, if you can secure it. So just an FYI, I just wanted to put that out there that these both the, both of these animals also do great in outdoor enclosures. As you can see, I had to bring Anzu in to be my partner in crime for this video because those two really did not like being held at all. At all. That's one thing about turtles and tortoises that I'm not gonna cover in this video. They don't really like being handled too, too much. You ready to do this, Anzu? Woohoo! Okay, just eat my hair, I guess. Weirdo. So next we're gonna talk about their heat requirements, their humidity requirements, and also their tolerance for these requirements. Starting with the three-toed box turtle, one of the amazing things about three-toed box turtles is that you don't need an extremely hot basking spot. So these turtles are going to like it around their ambient temperature they're gonna like around 75 to 80 degrees and their basking spot is only gonna be around 85 to close to 90 degrees. That's pretty easy to, to maintain, especially during the summers. Now, as far as their tolerance with like a drop in temperature, box turtles are, are pretty hardy and can handle some significant drops in temperature. If it gets too cold for your three-toed box turtle, they could go into hibernation or brumation. That's kind of up to you if you want to let them do that. I personally don't let Franklin go into hibernation. I tend to keep it a constant temperature year round for him and he does just fine. But that's kind of up to you. Just know the dangers of brumation before you actually put your turtle through that. Where keeping a three-toed box turtle gets a little bit more difficult is maintaining the humidity. Humidity is a bit of a challenge for three-toed box turtles. You wanna keep it around that 60 to 70% range. So if you live in a more arid environment, if you live like in, a, in Phoenix or in Arizona, it's gonna be kinda of hard to maintain that humidity. Even here in Sacramento, I have to spray Franklin once to twice daily just to keep that humidity up. For Russian tortoises, things are pretty much the total opposite. So Russian tortoises want a really hot basking spot around 100 degrees. You wanna keep their ambient temperature around 80 degrees. But the one great thing about Russian tortoises is that they are super hardy and they are really, really cold tolerant. So they can handle pretty substantial drops in temperature. A rise, a, too high of a rise in temperature is really what you're gonna have to worry about more, but they can really handle a lot, even more than a box turtle can. Although their tolerance to weather changes aren't substantially better than box turtles, it is enough to factor into this argument. You really don't have to worry about humidity with your Russian tortoise at all. You probably don't want the humidity to get too high, but other than that, it, it really doesn't play much of a factor to them. These, this is a desert species, so as long as you give them a bowl of water that they can drink out of and, and soak in if they so choose, that's pretty much all you need to do. So in my opinion, as far as heat, humidity, and just their tolerance in general, Russian tortoises take this category. Box turtles are also pretty great, but they do have a little bit more specific care requirements that you kind of have to look, look for a little bit more than you do with a Russian tortoise. Now onto their diets. Now three-toed box turtles are omnivores, which means they're going to eat a mixture of insects, fruits, veggies, animal protein, pretty much they will eat pretty much anything you put in front of them, your three-toed box turtle is going to eat. When I feed Franklin, I like to give him a wide variety of things. So I feed Franklin, as far as insects go, dubia roaches, earthworms, things like superworms, as far as the veggies and fruits go, I give them a lot of leafy greens like collard greens and mustard greens, dandelion greens, some strawberries, bananas, mangoes, carrots, just pretty much everything and anything you can think of. So where I guess box turtles could lose a little bit of points for this is that if you're kind of squeamish about feeding them insects or if you don't like having insects in your house, then a box turtle probably won't be for you because that is definitely an essential part of their diet. If you feed your box turtle too much of one thing, they can become a little bit picky with what they eat and it might be harder to get them on the other things. So that's just something you want to watch out for with your box turtle. As far as Russian tortoises go, they're easy strictly herbivores. You're just going to give them veggies and fruits and some Missouri tortoise diet and they are going to love it and they're going to be able to thrive for you. So you don't have to worry about any insects or any animal proteins at all. Just feed them some salad and they will be good. I feed kale a lot of dark leafy greens, collard greens, mustard greens, dandelion greens, kale, obviously. Pretty much the same diet 
vegetarian wise that I give Franklin, I can give to Kale, except it stops there and he doesn't eat any of the insects. So that's a, to me, I think for a lot of people, that's going to be a, a positive. So this category I'm giving to the Russian tortoise, I just feel like the strict vegetarian diet that they have is a real positive for a lot of people who, who don't wanna deal with gross, nasty insects or feeding their tortoise animal protein. Not to mention that Russian tortoises are a lot less picky when it comes to eating and they just devour their meals. So they're really great eaters. So I'm gonna give them a slight edge in this category and give them a point. And lastly, we are going to talk about the cost to buy a three-toed box turtle and a Russian tortoise and the cost of their upkeep. I'm going to keep this category short and sweet. Both the turtle and the tortoise are both really inexpensive to buy in a pet store. Even captive bred specimens are, are pretty, pretty cheap. Box turtles may be a little bit harder to come by, but not by much. And the cost of their upkeep it really isn't much. You wanna buy your mercury vapor bulb so that they'll get their UVB. You're gonna to have to buy them food. You may have to spend a little bit, tiny, tiny bit more on your box turtle because of the insects. But other than that, in terms of their upkeep, their prices, the cost is pretty much the same. You're really not spending too much money on either of these animals. And I think that's what makes you know both of them great because you can get captive bred specimens from a great source for not that much money and have just an amazing pet. I know money isn't the most important thing in the world, but for some people, it does play a role in their decisions, so that's why I needed to put this category in there, just to kind of give people an idea and show them that there's not much of a difference between the two cost-wise. So that category ended up in a tie, which means if I did the math in my head correctly, the Russian tortoise edged out the three-toed box turtle by one point. Deservedly so, I think for most people, a Russian tortoise is going to be a better and easier pet to keep. Three-toed box turtles just have a lot more specific care requirements that might take a little bit more experience to kind of get the hang of right off the bat. And I feel like Russian tortoises are just more forgiving in terms of making mistakes than three-toed box turtles are. That's what you get. You just smack them in the window, that's what you get. If you're asking me personally, Franklin was the first pet reptile that I ever got, so there's a little bit of like a sentimental value there. Three-toed box turtles are my favorite of the two, but as I said, I'm biased. So you really can't go wrong with either one as far as turtles and tortoises go. Just do your research and then make an, edu an educated decision based off of that. So that is it for today, you guys. What did you guys think of this video? Did you agree with the things that I said in this video? Do you disagree with the things I said in this video? Do you think Russian tortoises are the better choice out of the two? Let me know down in the comments. I really, really, really appreciate the love and support that you guys have been giving me lately. Make sure you guys click that like button. Make sure you guys click the subscribe button and hit that notifications bell. And please, please, please share this video. Until next time, everybody, my name's Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, and remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace. So next we're gonna talk about their respective heat requirements, their humidity requirements, and also their tolerance to these requirements. Really? And, and, okay. As far as Russian tortoises go, God damn, let me talk. So this category I'm giving to the Russian tortoise. Oh, here we go, here we go with the poop. Oh my god, the dude. Really feed them that as a staple. You could give them that as a treat. As far as Russian tortoises go. Oh my god. <laughs> Gotta love birds. I love my bird. I love my bird. I love my bird. I love my bird. I